Okay, I'm gonna teach you a little bit now about how to use the Aurora forecast at the Icelandic Met Office uh, webpage. Uh, Icelandic Met Office in Icelandic is Veðurstofa Íslands, um, but and the address for the webpage is here. But since this is all in Icelandic, we're gonna move to the English site. And basically, this page should be your best friend before you come to Iceland, and you should try to understand how it works because it can tell you everything about the weather in Iceland. Maybe I'll do another screencast about that at another time. But today, we are not interested in the weather, we are looking at the Aurora forecast. And here, at the middle of the page, uh, you find a link to the Aurora forecast. So this is the Aurora forecast. Um, as I've mentioned before, there are many different things that you have to consider when you're thinking about whether the, the Northern Lights will be out at any given night and this little really handy um, gadget here or web page can really help with that so first of all we have here a text forecast which is basically just a sum summary of, of your chances that night and you can see here that it's mostly cloudy but partly cloudy in the east and even clear sky at places that kind of tells you whether there's a chance of you being able to see the Northern Lights. And this is all about this map here. And this is Iceland, of course, you all know Iceland. Uh, and uh, basically what you want to see on this map is white spaces, because that means that there are no clouds. Or, uh, you know, only a little bit of clouds. Uh, the dark green color is heavy clouds, or a lot of clouds. And as the color gets... Um, lighter uh, there are less and less clouds and it's not impossible to see the northern lights like here there's a little bit of clouds over the Langanes peninsula a uh, great place by the way you should definitely check it out in summer Helga and I went all the way to here but anyway so it's not impossible if you see a spot like that because the clouds could open uh, or, you know at the exact right moment and you could see them but generally speaking, you're looking for white spots. Uh, and here below, you can check a few days ahead of, or in advance, or ahead of time. Um, but it's not enough just to click the days here, because as a, as a default, which is really silly if you think about it, it's an aurora forecast, it shows you the cloud forecast at noon. So you have to make sure that you check how it's going to look like at midnight uh, and as you can see today at midnight there is some chance to see them in the east mostly in the northeast a little bit uh, but there's not a lot of chance here in the in the southwest part of the country and there's a really good reason for it it's snowing outside so when it's snowing you're not likely to see enough lights so you can you know you can see what it looks like for the coming week here, for example, in the Reykjanes Peninsula, you might see something uh, on on Tuesday at midnight. And here, as you can see, on Wednesday, uh, well, no, not at midnight, but at noon you could see them, but of course it's too bright. But anyway, so you're looking for white spots in this map. But it's not enough that this map is white, because here you have to check whether there is a good possibility of seeing the, the northern lights and this is the actual aurora forecast this is just a cloud forecast and it shows different numbers like maybe you can see like on monday it's quiet uh, and then you know here it's low and it goes up to three or four and three and four are is, is a really good chance but two is not impossible if it's one, I would maybe not travel long distances to try to see them. But two, there's a fairly good chance that you, you might see them. And three and four, it's a really good chance. So when you have found a good um, cloud coverage, then you go here and you check whether the, the Aurora forecast is good or not. And, you know, anything above two is worth checking out. It's not guaranteed this is like the whales you can't tell the whales to show up on a whale watching trip 
you know, this is nature and everything, so this is just, you know, it's not exact science. Anyway, so here you can see information about sunset. The sun is setting in Reykjavik at a quarter past four these days, and it's dark from about quarter past five to quarter past nine, and the sun rises at 10.16, so you're looking, you need to see, um, you know, you're looking for time of the day when it's really dark, so this would be the time of the day that you're looking at. However, usually, and, and this is not also not exact science, and I might be talking out of my luck a little bit here, but I usually see them around maybe 10, 11 at night. I don't know why that is. Uh, it might be just because I'm out at that moment and I'm not out in the middle of the night, but I, I hardly ever see them like really early in the night, but yeah, that might be something completely coincidental and you can just forget that information if you know better. <laughs> anyway, so here you can see what how full the moon is because when the moon is really full it lights up the whole sky so that might hurt your chances a little bit and here you can see at what time the moon rises uh, seeing a big full moon rise on the sky is beautiful uh, but it might hurt your chances of seeing the northern lights um, so this is how you use this aurora forecast and like i said it's a really handy tool and I've been using this this winter to kind of try to predict whether the northern lights will be out. And I've been right, I would say, 90% of the time. Like, I look at this and I tell people on Facebook and Twitter, uh, I think there's a good chance you're going to see the northern lights tonight. And usually that happens. So it's a, I mean, it's, it's not completely accurate, but it gives a good indication of whether you're going to see something. So, just to go over it again. You want to see white in this map. Uh, Reykjavik is somewhere around here, if, in case you're wondering. And you want to see a two, but preferably three or four. Especially if you are thinking about, oh, drive to the other side of the country or something to try to see them. And I would not do a lot of driving for zero or one. It has to be at least, yeah, around two. It's not impossible to see it at one, just the chances are not as good. And then you have to see when it's dark, like, um, because obviously you can't see them when it's bright out. And also taking into consideration the moon, because the moon could light up the sky and then you won't see them the lights. So I hope that is helpful and, you know, go out and explore.